This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas, and this is the first lesson in the garter bar series for machine knitters. Now, what I have here is a standard gauge garter bar in the little red box that it came in, and you can see it. And then here is a bulky gauge garter bar. I thought I would just hold these up so that you can see the difference in the needles on these. And they are exactly the same product in different sizes. The connector is a little different. The standard gauge connector is this clip right here, and they go together by putting this, this um, on the post and then putting this inside the two metal bars. I haven't had them clipped together in ages. But you do clip them together like that when you're going to do the full width of the needle bed. Now this next object in the box is called the stopper and people often ask me what the stopper is and what's the point and that's going to be a really important thing in these lessons. Now since the product is so similar and I'm going for visibility I'll be mostly showing on the bulky garter bar. Here's the box that the bulky garter bar came in. And this garter bar has a little different connector than the bulky, I was, the standard one I was showing. Here's what the connector looks like. And the connector goes in here on this one and then on this one to join it so that you could do the entire bed. And for the lessons, I'm just going to be using one piece of the garter bar set. So it has two pieces of garter bar in the box, and it has two of these needle stoppers. And the next thing I'm going to talk about is the needle stopper. The needle stopper has to be adjusted. It has a screw here and a screw here for that purpose. The needle stopper is going to fit on the needle bed when the needles are pushed all the way towards you in hold. It fits behind the needle here and in front of the gate peg right here. And the whole point of the stopper is to brace the knitting needles so they can't move. Now this stopper is not adjusted. To adjust the stopper, you can just get a screwdriver and loosen the screws so that it'll open and close. And then put it on the machine in position and then close it so that it, it's going to hold everything firmly. And this just tighten the screws. Simple as that. Unless you adjust the stopper for the particular machine you're using, the stopper is of no use to you. So, that's how to adjust the stopper. I do not think I can overemphasize the importance of using the stopper. Most people who really don't like working with the garter bar have not learned to use the stopper. So, make up your mind to learn to use the stopper. There are a few situations where you can get by without it, but for the most part, you need to learn to use the stopper. Now, let me show a few of the things that you can accomplish with your garter bar. The first and most obvious thing that you can use your garter bar for is to make garter stitch. Here's some plain stockinette, and then here is a little section of garter stitch. Hand knitters use garter stitch quite often because of its remarkable qualities. First of all, garter stitch is a fully reversible stitch. It looks just the same on the back side as it looks on the front. Secondly, it has a lot of spring and it lies perfectly flat. So we do use garter stitch quite a lot, but I certainly would not want you to think that the only thing that you could do with the garter bar is garter stitch because most of the time that I use the garter bar, I use it to do an assortment of other things. The first and most obvious thing that you can use your garter bar for is to make garter stitch. Here's some plain stockinette, and then here is a little section of garter stitch. Hand knitters use garter stitch quite often because of its remarkable qualities. First of all, Garter stitch is a fully reversible stitch. It looks just the same on the back side as it looks on the front. Secondly, it has a lot of spring and it lies perfectly flat. So we do use garter stitch quite a lot. 
but I certainly would not want you to think that the only thing that you could do with the garter bar is garter stitch, because most of the time that I use the garter bar, I use it to do an assortment of other things. I have just brought a sample over to the machine that I made this morning of various things that you can do with the garter bar. This is an interesting stitch called Quaker Stitch, also reversible, and has a very interesting way of pulling and, and rolling. And there are lots of uses for Quaker Stitch. This lace was made with the garter bar, and it goes really very fast. This is just an all-over lattice, and here's another example of a lace made with the garter bar. It's just the occasional eyelet. Just above that lace, I have a little section where I show a, dec a double decrease in the middle that might be something you would do to create, for instance, a V-neck band, if holding it that way makes it kind of obvious. And that's another thing that I plan to show you. You can increase, you can decrease, you can gather and you can move things around, you can install necklines. Here is a cable that I turned on the garter bar. That is to say, the one on the right is how it looked after I turned it, and on the one on the left, I actually latched up a couple of stitches to make a more attractive cable. So there's a few ideas just to get you started thinking about what you might do with your garter bar. For this first lesson, I want to talk about one of the first things, most common things that you do with a garter bar, and that is that you bring the needles all the way out to hold with the needle pusher, and then you put the stopper on, just like that. Now, once that stopper's on, the needles cannot move left or right, and they can't move front or back, so they hold still. What could make a garter bar rather difficult and frustrating to use is having the needles move all over the place. Then, to use the garter bar for a stitch holder, all you do is push the stitches back, and you just want to make sure that all the latches are open. Well, pushing the stitches back opens the latches. But I also recommend that you have a little homemade tool. This is a cut-up credit card. Wonderful use for an old credit card. And you can slide this along inside the latches, and they will open very quickly. Now, I didn't really need to do that just now because they were open, but sometimes they close on you, so keep one of those handy. And <laughs> one credit card makes two tools. So here's the garter bar simply hooked on all of the hooks, a hook going through each eyelet. Then I take my hand and I just yank the knitting right onto it. Now, I point out that I do have weights hanging on the knitting. When you use the garter bar, you always want to have weights. You might also notice that I have my machine flat and my river off. Sometimes you can use the garter bar with the machine tilted and the river on. In fact, I do that a lot, but for some of the things I'm going to show, it doesn't work very well unless it's flat, just for certain things. So, once you've done that, generally you just push in a little bit to open the latches and lift it right off. Now your stitches are on this for a stitch holder. And this is how it looks on the front. Here's how it looks on the back. And you could, in fact, put it back on from here. But, but the point of make, using it for a stitch holder is that you could set it aside. You could make, make, for instance, the back of a raglan sweater. Set it aside, no waist yarn. And then when you're ready to knit on the back of that raglan sweater, you just line these guys up. And you just drop them on the needles. Get them all the way across. That's that. So you can use it as a stitch holder.